the Minister for Education has indicated that he wishes to make another statement. Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I would like to make a statement to this Assembly regarding the establishment of the Independent Review of Education. Members will be aware of the commitment in New Decade New Approach to, quote, establish an external independent review of education provision with a focus on securing greater efficiency in delivery costs, raising standards, access to the curriculum for all pupils, and the prospects of moving towards a single education system. And I think there's a couple of other references directly to the um, review within NDNA. Work to establish the review had to be suspended in March 2020 due to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm keen to make further progress in establishing the review and to that end secured the executive's agreement in principle to the draft terms of reference which will now be published. This is very much the start of the beginning. The real work lies ahead once the independent panel is recruited and the evidence uh, gathering uh, commences. However, the agreement in principle of the draft terms of reference is an important first step and it signals the intent to have a wide-ranging review of our education system with a view to providing outcomes for children and young people. I should start by saying that we should not underestimate the task ahead. The review and the delivery of whatever recommendations it makes uh, could radically reshape the design and delivery of education in Northern Ireland. However, reform and transformation will only occur, I think, with political and stakeholder agreement and wider community engagement as well as the provision of adequate funding. Education in Northern Ireland operates in both a congested and contested space, and change is inevitably a highly emotive issue. A non-political, non-sectoral and wholly independent review is an essential starting point. It is important uh, that we approach the review with open minds and without our own predetermined views on what its findings will be. We must also recognise that whilst the education system faces many significant challenges, we are building from a position of strength. There are many areas of excellence within the current system we can be proud of our school leaders, our teachers and our pupils. We have a well-trained and highly committed workforce delivering innovative practice and our children and young people continue to achieve high levels of attainment. These strengths need to be built upon uh, to ensure that they permeate the entire system and challenges must be identified and addressed. We are all in agreement that if we are to continue to deliver world-class education, we need to reform, modernise and transform. We should always be striving to improve services and deliver better outcomes. Indeed, there is already a significant amount of work happening in the field of education transformation and reform, and it is important that this review builds upon such work rather than trying to stall it or duplicate it. Members will be aware of the ongoing work of the Expert Panel into Education Under Achievement, which was also a commitment within NDA, NDNA. Further to that, to my, uh, my department continues to work closely with the Department of the Economy uh, on a 14 to 19 strategy, and work is commencing to, on the delivery of nine workforce reviews linked to the Teachers' Pay Agreement. The review panel will need to be uh, cognizant of a wide range of work across the executive uh, which link to improving outcomes for children and young people. All good education systems uh, continually look at how they might uh, improve the quality of provision and all good schools want to improve further. This is now an opportunity to strategically review education policy services and provision and set out a clear vision of how education should be delivered in Northern Ireland in the 21st century. The terms of reference for the review have been agreed by the Executive and will now be published. The review will commence in 2021, once an independent panel can be appointed. This will be done by via an open public appointments process to ensure the panel is wholly independent with an appropriate breadth of experience and range of expertise. The panel will work over a period of approximately 18 months, producing an interim report after 12 months. I am open to providing a level of further time, if required and requested, to ensure a quality piece of work is produced. The panel will be made up of a chairperson, a vice uh, chairperson, uh, that should, should read a vice chairperson rather than a vice person, uh, and three panel members. Uh, these roles will be remunerated. The agreed terms of reference sets out the scope of the review and expected deliveries from the independent panel. The review is based around three core strands. Strand one will focus on the educational journey of children and young people and the outcomes they achieve. 
They will consider all aspects of the pupil's experience of education from early years to trans uh, transition into careers. This will include a range of issues such as the transition and transfer at age 11, the experience of children with special educational needs, and the delivery of the curriculum, as well as many other important aspects. Strand 2 will focus on support for settings in schools, introducing the, uh, the issue of funding and local government's arrangements. This strand will wish to consider how we support our schools um, and our teachers to best teach our children and young people. Again, this will cover many different issues, including the challenging roles of school teachers and uh, school leaders and teachers, the role of inspection and school improvement, and the role of technology in education to support learning, pedagogy and qualifications. Strand three will, uh, will then consider how our education system is designed, delivered and administered. The panel will wish to consider the barriers to effective delivery uh, and areas of duplication or inefficiency. This will be a complex uh, work area with a focus on the core structural issues which may negatively impact on delivery and outcomes. While the terms of reference and scope of the review covers a wide range of areas, it's clear to me I think there's one element that still requires some further refinement. That's to ensure that the review is ambitious enough to encompass a vision of change uh, and puts, uh, puts in place the practical steps for the learner's journey beyond school to further hand higher education and fully prepare them for work and life. To that extent, today's announcement is not the finalised position, uh, and given the critical involvement of the Department of the Economy, I'll be engaging in, with the Economy Minister in the time ahead to see what additions are needed to the terms of reference. None of this will detract from the existing terms of reference, but will add to them before the panel commences at work and any additions will be brought to the Executive and then confirmed in a statement to the Assembly. I would also reiterate that nothing in the review will act or indeed should act as an obstacle or delay to the necessary reforms that may need uh, to be made in the interim by either my department or in conjunction with the Economy Department, such as the 14 to 19 strategy or the need to prepare uh, our future workforce by embedding a digital spine in our young people's education. Nothing in this review should be allowed to impede progress, nor used by anyone as an excuse to avoid difficult decisions by attempting to kick the can down the road. In addition to the three distinct stands, uh, strands, the panel will, will be asked to outline a clear vision for what education in Northern Ireland should aspire to be in the 21st century, the outcomes it should deliver, the appropriate indications of success, and the key actions uh, required to make this vision a reality. It will be for the appointed chairperson to set the work plan and agree the methodology for engaging with stakeholders. However, I expect the review to be delivered in a collaborative manner with significant engagement to, in order to gather evidence and assess issues. Education has a wide range of stakeholders and it's essential that we have an opportunity to support and inform the review. I'm keen that the voice of children and young people is central to the work of the review and their views considered on how education is currently delivered in Northern Ireland and how it might be improved. Parents and carers also have a critical role in shaping the needs of our education system, and it will be critical to ensuring the, reviews, uh, the review progresses successfully. Our school leaders and teachers uh, will also be able to provide insight on current provision, gaps in services and barriers to improved outcomes. There should also be significant engagement with education's sectoral bodies and trade unions, as well as wider representative groups. While engaging with children and young people, practitioners, trade unions, etc., it's vital that all viewpoints, all stages, all sectors, and all school types, including special education, are involved. There will also be a cross-departmental working, uh, working with many areas of government, having a role in the delivery of education or improving outcomes for children and young people. In particular, I, I would expect close working with the Department uh, for the Economy on matters relating to further and higher education and preparation of young people for the world of work. Engagement at a political level is also vital. I see little value in taking time and spending money on delivering the views if its recommendations cannot be put into action. It is incumbent on all of us to work together to find solutions to the challenges we face, build consensus on delivery of those actions and secure the necessary resources and commitment for educational transformation. I firmly believe that everyone in this House wants to see the same things for our children and young people and our education system. We all want a system which provides children and young people with the absolute best start in life. We all want a system that, that fully develops children's personalities 
talents and mental and physical abilities to their fullest and equips them to thrive in later life. We all want a system that is fair, open to all and provides uh, appropriate support for those who need it most. We all want a system uh, that values its workforce and provides them with the tools they need to be effective. We all want a system that is sustainable, effective and joined up. Fundamentally, I believe, despite our differences at times, we all want the same things for our children and young people, our workforce and our schools. Just sometimes we disagree about the methods of obtaining those outcomes. It is as we are at the start of a journey, and we can all agree on where we want to go, but have different opinions on the best route to get to that destination. I think we must all approach the review with open minds. The review must be based on evidence, learn from best practice locally and elsewhere, and be informed by the voice of stakeholders. The panel will operate with objectivity, and we, as the final decision makers, uh, once that review concludes, must do also. I look forward to the review commencing later in 2021 and ask members to appreciate it will take some months to run the recruitment process. I'm sure everyone in the House will support the work of the panel once it is in place. I call Chris Little, the Chair of the Education Committee. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, the time that was given to this Assembly to read uh, the key statements on exams and now the fundamental external independent review of education was completely unacceptable, uh, and I hope that will be dealt with uh, by the Speaker's office. Uh, I nonetheless welcome this important uh, statement with, in relation to the independent review of education, uh, a proposal that was made by the Alliance Party during the New Decade New Approach talks. And it is obviously a key opportunity to reshape an education system that is high on quality, low on equity, in financial crisis, and that separates children and young people at the age of five and trains our teachers separately. Um, it is an opportunity for fundamental reform to put in place equal educational opportunity for children and for them to learn together. Can I ask the Education Minister when the independent review will start, when it will report, and when that fundamental reform can commence? For his comments. I should say as well, I mean, again, I've referred to the earlier remarks in relation to the timing issue. I suppose uh, where we were in a slightly different position, I think, and there were a few of the detailed comments, for instance, that came from the Education Committee we were able to take on board. Uh, the member will have been aware that, in terms of the terms of reference, while the final decision lay with the executive in terms of terms of reference, we were in a position from both um, some sectoral bodies and also the Committee of Education to give draft terms of, of reference and take on board where there were some suggestions um, in relation to that. In terms of uh, timescale, the aim would be to move as quickly as possible, but it will be probably a few months into 2021 before it is fully established. So there will need to be a recruitment process of, first of all, expressions of interest by way of public appointment, then at least a, some level of, um, uh, be it whether it's interview process or whatever, to ensure that, the, if you like, people are appointable, appointments will then be made, and then provision made to be able to support that. And, and, the member will be aware, for example, that when it came to the, which was arguably a simpler process, the expert panel, uh, we were in a, the position was we were in a position to announce, for instance, in one particular month, uh, I think in June, and then with the work to start in September. Now, I don't think it would necessarily be that level of time frame, but it will commence in 2021. The member indicated in terms of uh, time frames, uh, again, to some extent, this will be up to the panel itself. We have given an indication that a full report should be there within 18 months and an interim report within 12 months. There was initially slightly tighter time frames, but one of the um, bits of feedback that we got from a range of the sectors was that that was given the scope that would have to be encompassed by the panel was potentially uh, something that would be challenging at least in terms of being able to deliver that. So what has been put in place is that, uh, as I said, there will be an 18 month period uh, for that with, with an interim report after 12 months. But also, but this would be at the call of the chair itself, an opportunity that uh, should they feel that, that, that they need a little bit more time, that they can ask for up to an additional six months. It is important that whatever emerges out of this is, is got right. And so from that point of view, um, while it is prescient that, that, that this is, is delivered, it's, it's also the case that, that it, it's not a question of rushing something to a particular absolute deadline uh, in that regard. 
And I should also indicate indeed some of the issues that will be covered within this and will be of interest to both the Chair and the Committee. If there are changes that can be made within education, it is not a question of we should wait uh, on a report doing. If there is issues that we can get consensus on and work through, I think we need to be making that progress in the meantime. So none of this should be an obstacle to any level of change that can be brought about. I call William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement to the House. Uh, this afternoon. Minister, can I welcome your commitment uh, to this review and in particular welcome your commitment to the establishment of the panel on educational underachievement, which is hugely important and uh, a, a policy which I hugely endorse and support. Does the Minister feel that 18 months in terms of the deliberations will be long enough for the panel to conclude its work and report? As I indicated, I think this is a degree of balance of not something if you like, simply moving into the ether, never reporting, while giving a realistic time frame. The original, I think, time frame was envisaged that a final report would be done within 15 months, and there was considerable feedback from a number of those we consulted with to say that they felt this was tight. So the balance, I think, that we've struck um, is that there's an expectation that there will be uh, a final report within 18 months, but there's the opportunity for the panel itself, if it feels that there is a further amount of work that needs to be done for a level of extension, but I think the request from that point of view should come from the panel rather than um, either myself as minister or his successor in title saying, you know, uh, from my point of view, trying to impose a particular additional time frame. I call Karen Mullen. Mr. Mulligan, last time caller, Minister, I welcome the work your department has done in bringing forward uh, the commitments of the new decade, new approach. Again, I, I share a concern in relation to the time frame. Um, being to, to be able to achieve the in-depth review that we require, but thank you for your answer. On the cross-departmental working, you mentioned uh, economy. Would the Minister agree with me that the Department of Health play a vital role here, um, particularly around our young people's well-being, and to ensure that it's provided for in a modern-day education system? Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I give. Um, first of all, you know, I take on board what's been said in terms of the time frame, and I suppose if there was clearly levels of difficulties that that arose in terms of the time frame, uh, I'm sure that there could be some level of amendment to that. But I think, by the same token, there will be a range of issues which all of us within this chamber at great length could debate until the cows come home. We, we can't just have something that's open-ended entirely either. But we'll, there will be a level of reflection, and that may be something which, which ultimately, in terms of as a process issue, may have to alter. But again, we have to see just how that works out. In terms of the cost deeper, I've obviously give one specific example uh, of economy, yes, but there are other issues which um, will come into play, which I think will require that, that cross-departmental support. She highlights, obviously, very clearly the Department of Health being a, uh, a key consideration. And I suspect, at least even tangentially, there will be actually other departments that this will touch upon. And so, you know, I want to see the panel particularly engaging with the widest range of stakeholders, and that will probably vary to some extent uh, according to the subject matter that the panel is, is looking at. So if they are looking at progression, for instance, into further and higher education, the key focus, for instance, will be uh, in terms of the learner journey on economy. If we are looking at, for example, how support within the system is there for particularly vulnerable children and children with special educational needs, health will probably be the, the key department where there will be that, that cross-fertilisation. And there may be other issues which um, will touch at least on, on, on other issues if they're looking at school transport. Is there a role particularly for the Department of Infrastructure? Nothing in this actually circumscribes both uh, who the panel can meet, what organisations. I think the point very clearly though needs to be made, it is, goes beyond simply the remit of the Department of Education. And so therefore they will look, and it was not simply within government, but there's also a lot of good work that at times has happened on the ground through third sector bodies, through individuals, and as well as those formerly within education, for example, uh, the role of parents I think will be critical as we, we move ahead. I call Daniel McCrossan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I, I welcome the uh, statement from the Minister. I welcome the review, and I also welcome the opportunity on behalf of the SDLP to engage with the panel on uh, educational underachievement, which was very, very useful. Uh, Minister, uh, why is your department and EA outside of the scope of the review, considering how vital these organisations are to the effective operation of the education system? Surely, uh, DE and EA should have been part of Strand 3. Are EA separate? And if so, Minister, why are they separate? Surely they should have been part of this review, particularly given the trail of chaos to date in relation to aspects of, of their remit around SEN and other matters? 
What I would indicate, first of all, is that there will be a particular review, there's a separate review that is due about now, into EA uh, as well. I think this will involve all organisations, and indeed, the other issue in terms of the terms of reference, there is a clear reference in this to what um, the strands can contain, and effectively, therefore, is an expectation can contain, but this is put in a very permissive way, so that if, uh, in terms of the wider position as regards governance or anything else, if the panel seeks to move beyond um, simply the definitions that are put within the terms of reference, there's no bar in them looking at anything, including the, the Education Authority or DE from that, that matter. I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank the Minister for bringing a statement to the House today, and it is a, a, an important piece of work. Um, the Minister rightly pointed out that there are a number of strategies that are ongoing and, and are, aren't uh, mutually exclusive to this strategy. And on one of those, Minister, uh, the best start to education is vital for any pupil, and the Minister is aware that Northern Ireland currently has the lowest starting age in Europe. Uh, he is also aware that children born prematurely underweight or with a birth date in May or June are at an economic, uh, sorry, a, a developmental and academic disadvantage. Can he update us on the call for a flexible school start age, or will this have to wait on the independent review picking this up as a critical no, issue? I mean, look, I, I made it very clear, and I probably gave a couple of examples that maybe had a crossover with economy. But I made it very clear in the, in the statement that where there are changes that can be made and should be made ahead of any level of, of, um, uh, any level of reporting of this, and particularly within the next uh, year and a half of the, the Assembly lifetime, I think they should be made. And I think he makes a very valid point in terms of, particularly for premature uh, babies and the, the impact in terms of, and I would be keen to look at what can be done, I think it would require from initial expiration, it would require a legislative change because at the moment the school starting age is set very rigidly in legislation to require. If there is um, legislative action that can be taken during this term to actually put a greater level of flexibility, I would be keen to see that, that happening. We need to scope out precisely how that can be done. But that is, if you like, a very good example of here's perhaps where something, if it is able to be changed, can be changed, and it shouldn't be a question of this is something long-fingered until, until the report comes out. So I would share his, his position. We did, I suppose, to make sure that it was directly looked at. I think it was one of the suggestions of the Education Committee make an explicit reference to the flexibility is now within the, the, uh, the final terms of reference on that, on that basis on it. But the member makes a valid point. I call Robin Newton. Uh, thank, you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And uh, I agree with others. This is indeed a very timely uh, announcement today is very ambitious uh, and undoubtedly uh, will be welcomed right across the chamber and right across the educational sector. Uh, I note it is the second as others who have, uh, who have spoken have, have, uh, this is the second new decade new approach uh, initiative that the minister has announced. Minister, I quote you from your, 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 your statement this is very much the start of the beginning. The real work lies ahead once the independent panel is recruited and the evidence gathering commences. Can I ask the Minister, what do you believe is going to be the most challenging aspect the panel will face? Well, look, I, I'm not sure. I, mean, look, I, think, I think probably the, the most challenging aspect across the board, I mean, there will be some issues which are more contentious than others. I think the challenging issues will be particularly around the breadth which by its necessity an independent review has to encompass because we're talking about uh, the education of our children from preschool age right up to beyond um, secondary school age on that basis. So there, there is a very wide remit uh, to cover. And I suppose the, the other issue will be whether well, there will be a scoping out of what is needed to financially support particular aspects. Uh, it will also, I suppose, be trying to ensure that what is, is there is, is realisable from a financial point of view. Now, there may well be certain proposals, I can't prejudge what will come forward, that could be argued then that will create greater efficiencies and save money, but there will also be some proposals which will lead to additional expenditure. And I suppose it's trying to make sure that, um, that we have a broader sort of way forward, uh, which also then can be compatible with what ultimately can be affordable, because I, I suppose if... If any of us, um, we may come up with very different visions, but if any, any of us was given several billion extra, uh, extra billion into education, there's an awful lot of the problems out there could be solved, but it's a mixture of where it is financially and a need for best practice and reform. So it's, it's about the two going hand in hand. 
Can I encourage the minister to continue to use his microphones to ensure okay. that what he's saying is picked up from, from Hansard? I call Nicola Brogan. Thank you, and again, thank the minister for his statement here today. Um, minister, the new decade, new approach outlined that an independent review would look at a number of aspects of the education system here, including special education. The minister is aware that regulations and a code of practice are currently being consulted on for the new um, special educational needs framework. Is this new framework beyond the scope of this review, or how does the minister expect the independent review to impact the new framework? The point is, and I'll try to speak into the microphone, I know that there may be some times we feel actually not hearing what I'm, I'm saying may be a, a positive advantage, but nevertheless, for the sake of, of Hansard, I will make sure that I'll, I'll speak into it. No, I mean, look, I, special education is contained within that. This, of course, comes back to one of the issues which has been raised, and I think there's ongoing work in terms of special education that we shouldn't be waiting for the, the review to appear before these things can be put in place. Specifically, as, as the member outlined, in terms of the SEN regulations and the code of practice, uh, those are coming to a conclusion in terms of, I think, given time frame, there's been a slight extension in terms, of the, uh, in terms of the discussion around that. I think the only limitation, I think, uh, while I wait to see precisely what emerges from that, the only limitation in terms of the speed and extent to which that could be implemented would be the budgetary position, which has not as yet been determined for 21-22. But SEN regulations are probably my top priority for next year's budget. I think it's important that those are implemented and that we ensure, because uh, I think as well as providing that protection and support for our young people who have special educational needs, I think the SEN regulations and the code of practice will also actually have a very positive long-term impact because a lot of it is about ensuring both collaboration and cooperation, but also ensuring as much as possible there's an earlier intervention, uh, which again, I think both from the, the benefit of the young people themselves and the wider system, I think can be beneficial. I call John O'Dowd. Uh, uh, and I welcome the Minister's statement, though, with the caveat that uh, the upcoming centenary of the state will remind us as to why we have the educational structures we have. And uh, I think there will be some concern in some of those structures that they may find themselves under pressure. Uh, but we'll wait for the review and we'll give evidence to it. The point I want to raise is I welcome the fact that there's going to be continued decisions made within education because reviews can delay progress as well. Will the Minister be in a position soon to announce the outcome of the 14 to 19 review, which has been going on for a very, very long time? I think there's still further work to be done on that between myself and the economy. Look, as with a lot of things, the member makes a very valid point that there shouldn't be any levels of, of, of delays. And I think there is always somebody within the system of whatever bit who would be quite keen, because the decision will not necessarily be to their liking, to push it down the road. And I think that it's important that on a range of decisions that doesn't, that doesn't happen. Um, I think there will be ongoing work to ensure then that we reach a point uh, during 2021 where we can have a full declaration on the 14 to 19 strategy that will require further work with uh, the uh, economy minister. Uh, but again, it's one of the, and why I think specifically I mentioned it, it's not something where there will be an examination of how we impact on the learner journey, that that is one of those things which should not be delayed by this. We need to move ahead um, with finalising that. I call Justin McNulty. Um, I thank the Minister for his statements and I warmly welcome any endeavour to improve education for our children and young people and for our teachers and school leaders. Minister, I'd like to see a specific focus on improving education for children and young people from disadvantaged backgrounds. I didn't see that referenced in the statement or in the terms of reference. I think the scope of the terms of reference should very much focus on improving the, the education for those young people. And if you could let, let me know why the ongoing review does not include um, or marry with the, the, the review that's happening in the Education Authority, surely there should be a symbiotic relationship there. And when will you report on the independent review on exams last year undertaken by Deloitte? Okay. This year. I think there's probably about three questions in there, so I'll try, I'll try, and, I'll try and remember those. Uh, sometimes I feel like a bit like the generation game, the, as the, the obstacles, as the, the prizes go past in, in that regard uh, with Mr McNulty. I suppose in, in relation to those, yes, the, look, as regards any other reviews that are taking place, the idea is to have this in a symbiotic relationship. The point is that they shouldn't obstruct other reviews, but should be cognizant of those. That also that relates to both the Education Authority 
but also, I think, uh, again, within this, looking at the wider context of where there is disadvantage within the system will clearly be part of this uh, review. Again, uh, I suppose in terms of terms of, of reference, the point is to have something that is relatively succinct uh, in its nature, but there is no bar uh, beyond what is put down on paper for the panel to be, to be looking at. And I suppose in terms of particularly disadvantage, there is a level of cognizance that, that presently we do have a panel that is looking at educational underachievement and is due to report, I think, in May of this, of this year. And as with other reports, the idea is that as the panel works ahead, they are actually to be cognizant of what is, is happening elsewhere, what may well be reported elsewhere. In terms of the 2020 situation, uh, I think that uh, Deloitte's have carried out the report. I think their report, as I understand it, is a draft stage. Um, and so I, I would anticipate that that will be published early in the new year. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for your answer so far. Um, Minister, indeed, we all want our young people to have the best possible educational experience uh, throughout their lives. Uh, but I don't see any mention of the preschool sector in this review. I'm wondering if you can, if you can advise me, will they be included in the review? Because I think they are extremely important because it's it's at the age of two onwards that our children start to learn. No, uh, from, from that point of view, no, I think the, the uh, preschool is concerned. So it's, it's whenever we're talking about as part of one of the bullet points, the preparation of children. Um, and they, I think the very first bullet point in strand one is the preparation of children for schooling in the early years, including childcare, preschool and transition into primary school. So it, it, it will be part of that. And I think the member is, is also right in terms of the critical nature of, of that. Uh, and again, without rehearsing other arguments, sometimes uh, we have clashes over what particular provisions are put at certain particular points in the, in the school year, uh, sorry, in the school, in the lifetime of, of pupils. Actually getting it right from the start in terms of that, that preschool year has a high level of shaping of what our young people will be. It's not saying that, that once you get to the age of five or six that things are abandoned. But if we're trying to do a catch-up at a later stage, if we don't have that level of focus in at the preschool era, then we are reaching a point at which uh, there is um, a, a danger of children already being behind on the first day they enter P1. I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you very much, um, Deputy Speaker. Minister, I'm not going to ask you what's already contained within the document, because as the person who actually wrote the definition of what was going into it, um, I'm quite happy with what's there. However, I am disappointed that it's only your department that's looking at this review because it was very clearly stated during New Decade New Approach that this was a cross-departmental consideration of an independent review of education. Um, I know you've mentioned that you will be working with economy. It has been mentioned before about infrastructure, communities, health. Everybody needs to um, be involved in this. But this comes down to the key of my question. Who's the recruitment panel? In the terms of reference under paragraph 34 and 35, it states that, that within your department that you will be coming up with the recruitment panel and there will be criteria um, for the independent panel that has experience, skills and personal qualities. When will those be published and will the executive feed into that criteria? Well, in terms of, uh, in terms of the detail of that, the aim would be early in the year to, to have public advertisement for those who, from an expression of interest and criteria in, in connection uh, with that. Uh, I mean, I am almost tempted to say, look, I thank the member for all the work that she's done in this, in this sphere. Uh, if she's written the terms of reference for this a year or two ago, it could have saved my officials an awful lot of, an awful lot of work in the meantime on that, on that basis. What I would say is she does make a valid point in terms of this being, and that's why I've, I've referenced this being cross-departmental, but the position on, I suppose, with any review, any panel that is brought forward, there will always be a department which has a lead role within it. And consequently, clearly into an independent review in education, while it will touch upon a range of other uh, departmental subjects, uh, it is clear that the, the strongest place where that is centred is within the Department of Education. But she's right in terms of the fact that, that the uh, NDNA commitments are cross-cutting across the executive, and that was why, for example, uh, that in terms of the terms of reference, while we sought the views of um, stakeholders prior to it moving forward, the principal point was that this was actually brought to get a full executive approval from the whole executive. And I know that, for example, while I think broadly speaking, without speaking out of turn, that the executive welcomed this, there was, for example, 
uh, some changes that were suggested either by the economy minister or indeed I think there was some change of language that was suggested by the justice minister which was able to be taken into account. So it is from that point of view where well, the Department of Education is leading on this, it is a, a wider executive uh, commitment and that is why it has been through uh, the executive itself and also why if there was any level of adjustment at any later stage it would be the executive would be any level of approval would be sought for that. I call Matthew to Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Minister, there's always a risk with these things that if you prioritise everything, you're prioritising nothing. The scale of what's being described here is truly um, vast in ambition, and while that's welcome, it's important that we see proper resourcing and also genuine independence of those who are um, undertaking the study. In relation to that independence, can I ask, given that his statement specifically says that open-mindedness will be key for all of us as we approach this review, given that there are very few internationally respected educationists who believe that selection at 11 is a good idea, if they come back, uh, and, and say that that is something that should be either reformed or abolished. Will he retain his open mind in terms of um, changing that approach? I'm sure I will retain the same level of open mind as the honourable member on the subject. I call Cahill Boylan. But, uh, I can thank the minister for her statement. And the minister knows that the British government has reneged on certain financial arrangements and commitments under the NDNA. What financial commitments has the minister been given? In relation to this review, Gorman Margaret. The establishment of the panel, indeed, I think has been scoped out by way of essentially a panel doing its work. Uh, this is something that can very clearly be retained within budget. And for instance, I think the cost, which is estimated for 18 months, is a little bit over a quarter of a million. That, that's something that's relatively. There are, and, and you know, we can have levels of dis, dispute at times, sometimes between ourselves and government, uh, or between ourselves within government. Uh, as to where financial support should be, but this is something that financially is something that, that clearly can be afforded and is well within, within budget on that, on that basis. I call Jim Allister. Uh, I want to probe um, why the terms of reference have been expanded considerably beyond what was in New Decade, New Approach. New Decade, New Approach summarised the focus as being on greater efficiency, rising standards, access to the curriculum, and uh, the prospect of moving to a single system. Yet within these terms of reference, we have, for example, as just referred to, the transfer system now subject to review. Was the uh, minister worked over in the executive by the anti-selection brigade? And is that why this is now here? And no. on the independence of the panel, is that independence called into question by virtue of the fact that their interim report goes secretly to the executive and the education committee, though no doubt we'll all hear about it on the BBC. Uh, but is that an indication that the executive is wanting to shape the outcome of this rather than truly submit themselves to an independent review? Well, I, I suppose I appreciate the point that the member has made. First of all, I've not been done over or in any way in, in relation to that. The review itself has to be. If we're looking at, at the full review of, of, in, of education, it has got to be comprehensive in its nature in relation to it. And uh, different members in this chamber, including myself, will have particular views in terms of selection, for example. Um, but in terms of the, he mentions about the norm will be that there will be a, an interim report produced. And that's the case, I think, in, in most sets of, of, of circumstances on, on that basis. So I think the wider review does simply reflect the need to cover the wide scope, if, if we are to have a proper review covering all of education, into the wide scope. And again, I think people shouldn't have a fixation with one particular aspect of this as opposed to the, the wider context in relation to that. Clearly, for example, if there's particular bits of change at any stage into the future, it will be for this House to determine what change actually happens. I call Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, Outcomes-based accountability, accountability and cross-departmental working, um, you would think it was 2016 without the five years ahead of us. But, Minister, I do welcome the review, 
But out of context of a programme for government, I really do wonder how cross-departmental and outcomes-based it can be. Because tr to truly affect outcomes, it has to dovetail into other reviews and policy across all government departments. Childcare, social disadvantage, justice, trauma, civil responsibility. We could stand here all day and talk about the opportunities that education can have for those various things. So how realistic is it that we can progress something that is substantial and worthwhile without a programme for government, which realistic isn't, realistically isn't going to happen until the, after the next election? Well, look, you know, there will be some work done. I mean, it's not really for me um, to answer directly fully on the, the programme for government. That particularly lies with, with TEO, but I think there will be progress that will be made in relation. I mean, there's no doubt that for all of us, where we would like to have been, whether it's in education or across government, um, we've all had to change course because of the, the, the COVID situation. But don't forget, as part of this, both in terms of the short and medium term actions that can be taken arising out of this, there is also as part of this to try to establish a wider vision for education, which goes beyond simply assembly mandates. So all those things will be able to take into account. The point, I suppose, I made earlier is that, that we need to reach, and this is why I think some of the consultation will need to take place with the panel, to try and reach a wider political and societal consensus on as many issues as possible. There's no point in simply producing a report which gathers dust because it is in a, you know, he said such and such, she said such and such, and there's no common understanding. I think that will be one of the major challenges that will, will lie ahead. But I think uh, I described this as the uh, start of the beginning or the beginning of the start um, earlier on. I think while there is clearly a level of dovetailing in with programme for government and other things, I think we do need to make a start on this. And that concludes questions to the Minister on his statement. Could I ask members who may be leaving the chamber now to ensure that they sanitise their area? Uh, and we'll uh, take a few brief moments uh, as we change those here at the table.